Hello, this is Sean Mullery from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and in this recording we're going to look at Tris B and Port B, which are two things that you've probably seen me use previously, or you may have a little bit of knowledge of the PIC, so maybe you know them already. But what I wanted you to do in one of the exercises was to look up this information, Tris B and Port B, find out a little bit about them in the data sheet, then look them up in the header file for the 16F88 as well, so that we can see how we can use them in the program. And what we're going to do then finally is we're going to actually use those in the C program. Now, I've already used them in the examples that I've shown you, so you've probably seen them already, but I'll be uh, this time I'll be specifically telling you uh, what I'm doing with them and how they work. So we'll, uh, we, I have the document open in front of me for the data sheet for the PIC16F88, and I'm going to look up Trispy. Okay, now again, we'll find lots of different locations for this, and uh, we can see that there are two um, two mentions of it here on this, okay? Um, so we have TRISB is at 86 hex, it's also at 186 hex uh, over on the other um, side of the, the, on the right-hand side here of the document as well. Just take note of those in your little notepad there beside you as you're going. Um, just take note of the numbers because we're going to see those, uh, or so, at least one of those later on in the header file. Um, you'll also notice that beside these, we have port B in, in two different ca cases as well. And uh, they are at 0, 06 hex and uh, 106 hex. Now, they're mentioned here again, but you'll notice that the numbers are the exact same again. The previous one we were looking at was actually the 16F87, which is not the chip we were using. This is the 16F88 chip, and again, you can see that they're mentioned there, but they're the exact same numbers as they were previously. So we'll just flick down through a few more of these. Um, you'll see here that that says, I'll just zoom in on that a little bit. It says the TRISB is the port B data direction register. Okay, so it obviously has something to do with TRISB and port B clearly have something to do with each other. Uh, so we need to find out a little bit more about that. Okay, so now we have some information about port B and the TRISB register. So I don't even need to go searching for port B. The two are written here beside each other. So port B is an 8-bit wide bidirectional port. The corresponding data direction register is TRIS B. If we set a TRIS B bit to 1, uh, this will make the corresponding port B uh, pin an input, i.e. put the corresponding output driver in a high impedance mode. Now, I'm not going to go into the electronics of this. That's, that's for other subjects to look at. But TRIS has, has to do with... Um, the setting up of the, the port pin into a mode that allows you to take inputs into the into the device. So the port B is an actual uh, port, as in it has actual pins on the microcontroller itself. So when we talk about a port and we talk about an 8-bit wide port, we're talking about something that has 8 pins on the actual device, so 8 little um, the actual legs that are on, on the chip, we can actually connect a solder joint or, or by, by other connection, we can actually connect items up to that and therefore get things in and out of the microcontroller. Now, clearly if we want to take something in, uh, we have to set the TRISB to 1. That allows us to take things in. So it sounds like we're writing out a 1 to it, but in actual fact, we're just writing to that register to set it up that we can then read from the register to take something in. That's if we set it to one. And what this seems to be suggesting as well is that we don't have to set all of the port for input or all of the port for output. We can actually decide pin by pin, bit by bit, which ones we want to be inputs and which ones we want to be outputs. So clearing a TRISB, as we can see here, a bit setting it to zero will make, I shouldn't say set to zero because set normally means to one. So clearing it to zero um, will make the corresponding port B pin an output, i.e. put the contents of the output latch on the selected pin. So again, there's a kind of an electronic latch inside in that, and again, I won't be going into details on that. 
Now, there's a lot of detail there about the actual external configuration of this to do with the uh, pull-up resistors and things like that. Again, that's for the electronics or the hardware side of it. We just want to cover the programming for the moment. Uh, so unless there's a reason later that we want to look at the detail of that uh, to set something up, we're going to leave that for other subjects. Okay. Now, the... What we find there, so what we found out here is that the Tris B sets it up to decide whether it's an input or an output, but it's port B is the actual port that we send things out on or read things in on. Okay. Um, now, I just want to see, is there anything else of particular interest to us there? Not really. So th there's enough information there for starters for us to, 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 to get to know. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to the IDE. And we're going to look at the PIC16F88 um, header file. And so what, again, we want to look for here is Tris B and uh, Port B. Okay. So we see it mentioned here. And we'll see where else it comes up. And so these are each of the individual bits on it, and there should be eight of these. And now we're back to the beginning. So uh, this is the more interesting part of it for us, which is the um, unsigned character here, Tris B, which is at address 86 or 86, I should say. I should say it shouldn't say 86 because that's decimal. So we're in hex here, so it's 86. And uh, that's one of the numbers that you wrote down in your uh, jotter there when um, when we found it uh, on the memory map in the document. Okay, so if we want to use Tris B, just like in the previous case where we were looking at the uh, AN uh, select or the analog select um, register, Tris B, we just simply write Tris B and we can write information to it uh, in that way. Okay, so uh, the other one we wanted to look for was port B. And again, I'm actually going to go previous this time because it'll uh, it'll bring us back up to where we were. And a lot of mentions of it here for different things. We want to get back up to the top. I'm going to have to go a long way, so I think what I'll do is I'll actually just uh, bring myself up to the top and uh, do a search again, and this time hit next, so that it gives me the first, and that's the, really the one that I want to look at. And we see that this one is at the address 06, which again is what you wrote down um, for the detail uh, of uh, that came from the data sheet. Okay, and again, it's just referred to as port B, all capital letters. And that's how we're going to refer to it. So do be aware that the information that's here in the header file, it looks very, very similar to what we've seen in the data sheet. Okay, we see that port B is written as all capital letters B, uh, all capital letters there, and Tris B is written as all capital letters there. So you, it comes to a point that when you look something up in the data sheet and you find the information on it, that's nearly enough without you even looking at the header file because you, you, you can now get a fair idea that if that's what, how it's referred to in the data sheet, that's how it will be referred to within the header file and therefore that's how you can refer to it in your C program. So going back to how we're going to use this, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the user settings here because here is where we set the ANSEL and you can see I've already written in Tris B uh, previously. So what exactly did I set it up to do? So this is where we want to initialize the user ports and so on. I've put it to all zeros. So if we if we think back to what that actually meant, uh, you can see here that if we put it to zeros, this will make the corresponding port B pin an output. So this is if we want to write information out to the port. Okay. Uh, and because I've written zeros to the whole of Tris B rather than just to one bit of it, then I have uh, I have written zero to all eight of those bits and therefore they will all be outputs. What I will do here in main then is I will uh, just set port B to something. So I sign it, uh, zero X um, AA. 
Okay, so that will give me uh, alternate sequence of ones and zeros, ones and zeros coming out of it. And again, this is what you would have seen previously. <clears throat> And if I just look at the I.O. pins here, we can see that they are all set up for output, D out, D out, all the way in the mode. And they are 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 0. So let's try a few other things then. Let's try setting only the, um, the bottom four bits to outputs and the top four bits to inputs. And I would do that by doing that, F0. So effectively what I'm doing is, I'm setting it as follows. 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So now we've set the bottom four bits to zero, the top four bits to one. That would make the top four bits inputs and the bottom four bits outputs. And when I do something like this, setting it up this way, I should, I should really kind of, uh, just make a little comment or something there beside it to say um, top m top four msbs are input bottom four lsb are output. And LSB stands for least significant bit, so least significant bits, and MSB stands for most significant bits. Okay, so let's let's uh, check that out and see how it does um, or what exactly happens. Check the I/O pins. And we see now that my, my original AA is not quite working because the bottom four bits are saying one zero one zero. That's perfectly fine. But we see the top four bits are just showing zero because they have um, all been turned into digital inputs. And what we notice here is that uh, with these things is that I can actually set these to another value. OK. Uh, now, that would be useful if I was actually taking something into the program and going to make use of it. We're going to do that in a few exercises time, uh, but before that, we're going to do a few exercises just with outputs. Okay. So the next exercises that you actually get will be to do with setting up the port purely as an output and putting different sequences out to the port pins.